Hello everyone, welcome to GoTerran TV. I'm Taryn, the traveling trainer of GoTerran Personal Training here in the greater Atlanta area. And we are welcoming back a returning guest, somebody who we spoke to earlier in the year, the host of the Plant-Based Entrepreneur Show, Mr. Jerry Sever, all the way from Playa del Carmen, Mexico. So it's gonna be wonderful speaking to him momentarily. But before we do so, if I could please remind everyone out there, if you'd be so kind to like this video, share it with all of your friends and family, and leave us a comment while you're at it, because we love to bring people like Mr. Jerry Sever here on GoTerran TV so they could share with you why it's important to be a vegan and what he gets out of it and what his true mission and philosophy is. We're going to learn that here momentarily, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Remember, GoTerran Personal Training is your time, your investment, and your life. See you in a second, folks. All right, folks, welcome back. I'm Taryn, the traveling trainer. As you can see side by side, we have uh, Mr. Jerry Sever, and we are also being joined uh, by Todd Stewart, of course, uh, the other co-host. And um, I wanted to start this out by uh, reintroducing Jerry to everybody out there. Um, for the folks, if this is your first time meeting Jerry or getting to see him, um, he is the host of the Plant-Based Entrepreneur Show, and he does a lot of other things. You know, I've interviewed him uh, some six or seven months ago on GoTier TV, so I'm really excited to welcome him back. And um, so all the way down, and let me make sure if I could try to say this right. I'm, I'm going to mess it up, but is it Playa del Carmen, Mexico? Did I come at l anywhere close? <laughs> that, that was perfect, Taryn. Oh, wonderful. Well, you're so, so kind. Well, nice to see you again, Jerry. How have you been doing? Well, I've, I've been pretty good. So, um, no no hurricanes this season. So Oh, thank no God. About, really. Oh, thank goodness. You just reminded me, Jerry, what about the earthquake? Were you guys impacted at all by that or felt any aftershocks or side effects? Uh, you know, we, we got tons of messages from friends and family all over the world. But fortunately, that was in um, Mexico City, which is about a thousand miles from where we are. So no, not even a shock down here. Oh, thank God. Wow. That was scary. Um, you know, I was thinking about you guys about that. And uh, I'm glad uh, everything's OK. Um, you know, we, we had your significant other here um, on the other show with Di and Todd the other day, and um, she seemed like she was just doing wonderfully. And, and again, um, you know, there's a lot to catch up with you guys, because um, the last time you and I spoke, um, you were just transitioning, finished transitioning from uh, New Zealand all the way over to Mexico. Um, you know, you guys are very worldly, worldly traveled, um, you know, originally from Slovenia. I, I think I'm coming close to saying that correctly. <laughs> You got that one right as well. <laughs> oh my God, I'm two for two. I'm I'm so far so good. I better not spoil my luck. Well, um, great great to have you back on. And, and again, we have our other co-host Todd Stewart. Um, and uh, Todd, remind me because uh, Jerry, I know that you're a vegan, but Todd, um, what is your familiarity with the whole vegan and vegetarian lifestyle? We spoke about that a little bit with Di the other day. Are you asking me? Yes. Are, you, you're a vegan, Todd, well, well, aren't you? That's what you share with well, no, uh, Jerry. No, I, I, try, I try to. I'm off um, beef and, and pork, but I still do chicken and some dairy and some oh. fish to keep, keep my weight up. Right, right, right. I remember, yeah, now you just reminded me. You were telling uh, Di that. But no, the... no vegan. Uh, vegan is like no dairy, uh, no honey, no animal products. Of any kind. Yeah, that's amazing. Because last time, Jerry, you told me uh, you had had your last bite of cheese somewhat 15 years ago, roughly. Is that about right? No, it was more like five or six. F five or six. I'm sorry, I'm getting the dates yeah. mixed. Yeah, yeah. But that that was incredible. I remember uh, you, you the, with the story you were telling me that uh, it was one of the breaking points for you that that was it, and you just went all in and full vegan from that point. The, the pizza, yeah, that was when my pizza, wife told me right. that I stank of cheese, and and yes. I decided that okay, if if cheese makes me stink to, to the woman I love, then um, I'd rather drop it. Yeah, wow, wow. That, that's incredible. Well, um, again, you know, you've got a lot of things going on. You're living the lifestyle down there, and, and you know, you're spreading the, the knowledge and uh, sharing all of your expertise with everybody. That's the whole goal, uh, and I commend you for doing that. Here, I've got a few things I wanted to outline and just start with. Um, can you tell the folks and talk about the uh, plant-based business week for a little bit here, please? Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the last time we spoke, that was just before things were really starting to, to get crazy with, with planning that event. Mm -hmm. because, um, first of all, it, it wrapped up in, in September, mm -hmm. but people can, can still um, see what it was all about at plantbasedbusinessweek.com. 
essentially it was the, the first online summit about vegan business because that's that's my main area of expertise okay help vegan vegan businesses and vegan entrepreneurs get their startups off the ground and um and grow their business and reach a wider audience so for plant based business week we interviewed 32 experts from all across the plant based industry so we had people talking about food we had people talking about fashion about marketing vegan brands about establishing a vegan brand online either for physical products or for stuff like coaching. And we packed those um, interviews in video and audio form and we released them over the course of one week. So um, I like to say it was kind of like the podcast that I produce, but it was one whole, one, one whole year of podcasting compressed in one week. Uh, uh, Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's incredible. And, you know, I think that uh, just basically, you know, you could learn so much from that and uh, be able to share that with people and uh, is so insightful. What was some of your takeaways and some of the things that you had learned uh, when you were there? Well, really the absolute number one takeaway that um, I'm getting over and over again from everyone that I talk to is that in, in this industry, it's really all about collaboration. It's not so much about competing with each other mm -hmm. and trying to, to be the best and trying to beat the other brand to, to the finish line or to the store or mm -hmm. to nationwide coverage. Because in, in the vegan industry, we're all really aiming for the same thing. We, we have the same goals. So, um, it's really amazing to see how all of these people that we interact with, everyone that we interview is so aware of this mm -hmm. and willing to help out other companies, other brands, even though they might be, they could be labeled competitors. Mm. But um, yeah, people know that if, if we help each other, in the end, it's, it's going to be all of us who win. Plus, of course, the animals and, and the planet. Yeah, yeah, certainly. You know, um, the animals, you know, let me ask you, Jerry, like, um, you may have uh, reiterated and hit on it before, but what was like maybe the main reason of going all vegan uh, more so than anything else? What's the number one reasoning that uh, for yourself? Uh, for um, vegan? Well, for me, it was actually pretty personal because um, I, I started eating vegan and I, I did not go vegan overnight. That's mm. what my wife did for, for instance. Yeah. I kind of just followed her in and started trying plant based food to see how it would make me feel. Mm, and it made me feel okay. And I noticed that I wasn't getting any colds over the winter. I noticed that I had more energy and then I just gradually dropped all meat from my diet and, and all eggs. And then cheese was the last thing to go, as, as we already mentioned before with that pizza story. Um, the, the rest, so awareness of how this affects the environment and, of course, just being aware how, how my diet choices affect the, um, the animals, that came a bit later. So I, I did not go in as, as an ethical vegan like so many people do. Mm -hmm. How about, um, let me ask you a question, Jerry, about like an international cultural difference. What is your impression of like going from Europe to New Zealand, now to Mexico and elsewhere and, you know, that you've seen? What's your impression of uh, veganism and uh, eat, meeting eat, I can't speak, eating meat across the world um, from what you've seen? Uh, how does it differentiate and compare and contrast? Um, well, Europe is actually, well, it's probably not that surprising, but um, it's it's pretty advanced. Although, if if we compare just the um, vegan industries in Europe and the States, they they are different. The uh -huh. um, Americans definitely have a more um, intense startup culture and just wanting to to grow big. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the the first vegan unicorn company, the, the first vegan brand that was valued over one billion was Hampton Creek and that's obviously um, that's American mm -hmm. um, Europe has a lot of vegan startups as well but they're a little smaller and, and more localized um, New Zealand was 
bit of a disappointment for us, hmm. mostly because of their um, farming industry. Hmm. As you probably know, there's, um, I think the, the ratio is somewhere around 15 to 20 to 1 in, in regards to cows versus people and, and sheep versus people. So um, because New, New Zealand relies so heavily on, on the meat and, and dairy exports, I I think they still have a way to go before veganism really catches on, although I've been seeing some really positive reports coming from that part of the world lately. Good. And um, New Zealand, um, I'm sorry, Mexico was a really pleasant surprise. So I don't know if it's just because of the area where we live and um, the Mayan Riviera, but um, there's about five or six vegan restaurants in, in Playa del Carmen where, where we live, which mm. is in no way a, a big city. It's got, I think, 100,000 people okay. or something. And, and more in Cancun, there's this vegan festival really close to us that happens twice a year. Cool. Everyone's really aware of it. And um, there are some really big names with really big followings that, that are vegan here in Mexico. So um, I, I think that because they they are Mexicans, they are, they know what buttons to push, they know how to use their leverage. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm actually quite, um, I'm quite optimistic about Mexico transitioning to something closer to, to a vegan diet, possibly even sooner than the New Zealand. Awesome. That is great. Uh, that, that is really, um, now let me ask you, Jerry, getting back to the plant-based uh, business week, um, you know, after launching the, um, uh, event. What's your plans and goals uh, ongoing with that as a recurrence? How often will that be, and um, how do you see that ex uh, expanding from that point? Well, um, the the first one with um, so we got thirty two people speaking. We got about five thousand people to to join us. Wow, that's great. Um, yeah, so we're probably going to run it again next week, uh, okay. next year. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know yet if we might go for a live event or, or not, but we're definitely going to be running um, a lot more activities for, for vegan entrepreneurs based off of that. So um, the good thing is that um, this event really helped us establish a lot of connections in, in the industry. It got us a lot of exposure and, and that now allows us to essentially do more good and, and help more brands reach reach their goals. That is tremendous because, you know, you and Maya make such a wonderful team in that you're uh, really educating people on the nutritional aspect and, and she's uh, getting everyone in shape with the injury prevention and fitness and health. So it looks like between both of you, you really cover the whole total package, well, you know, whole I, wellness. I just have to be clear on one thing. I'm not educating people on the nutritional aspect at all. That's that's still her job. Oh, I, okay, okay. I, I really focus on, on the business side. The business side, right, right. Hence the Business Week event. So that, that makes sense, yeah. You, so in other words, um, let's see, she's the uh, brains, you're the brawn, kind of, right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably describes it a little better. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, she's the mind, you're the muscle. And let me ask you about this now. Um, tell us about the uh, up upcoming uh, coffee table book that you've got going on on uh, vegan entrepreneurs. Yeah, so that's um, that's another thing that we're going to be launching off of Plan Based Business Week because okay. um, it's it's a combination of the the guests that we had on on the podcast so far and the amazing people that we interviewed on on Plan Based Business Week. Mm -hmm. as, basically going to be a feature of 50 people who are really making the difference in, in the plant-based industry. And it's going to be a collection of the biggest takeaways and the best things that we learned from, from talking to them. Cool. Oh, that's going to be wonderful. Excellent. What, and how about, um, you know, because talk about the other books uh, between both you and Maya before, because we did speak about that a little bit previously. Uh, what's been some of your fun projects in terms of, uh, you know, creating books and cookbooks and such? Well, Maya and me, we, um, we published two cookbooks back in, in Slovenia, mm -hmm. which, funnily enough, we published them after we had already left the country. Mm -hmm. um, they were... Um, pretty well received there. One of them is also available in English. Um, but really, I would say that our, our biggest projects recently have been um, her website and her injury recovery hub, because um, 
same as with other things like you said she she's the brain i'm i'm the muscle i'm i'm pretty proud of uh, what's what i built there in terms of the back end of her website and, oh, yeah. and the leadership site that um that she has going there yeah. So, yeah we we still collaborate on on those things Oh, that's just great. And, you know, it's amazing you guys could both uh, work in sync and keep a schedule that you do, because I would think it would take a lot of time, like in terms of, you know, budgeting, scheduling. Is that do you find that challenging at all or does it just flow pretty smoothly? It's definitely a challenge. Mm -hmm. I mean, as probably anyone who's working from home will know that um, it takes a lot of discipline Mm -hmm. and then on on the other hand, of course, because you you are self-employed, there's no guaranteed paycheck coming in anywhere you Mm -hmm. just rely on yourself so that was actually a pretty big learning experience of this past year when when we moved from New Zealand where I actually had a regular job Mm -hmm. except it wasn't I don't know if I mentioned that uh, the first time we spoke it wasn't a nine to five job it was a sometimes nine to six or nine to nine job so um I was really just patching it in with everything that we did together with Maya and working late nights and um, early mornings. So um, now that we're here, I actually have the entire day to um, schedule out all my activities. It it still means that I'm sometimes working nights, but it's definitely a little easier to, to organize your day if you know you have the entire day ahead of you and you don't have to work around another work schedule. I totally agree. Yeah, I, I, and I bet you agree too, Todd. Yeah, like you could relate to that. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, absolutely. Any entrepreneur watching right now, they totally know. They get what you're saying is that uh, when you're you're your own your own boss and your own schedule, then you run the show. I think that's wonderful, especially if you're working at home too. Um, talk about this. Uh, let me ask you this, Jerry. Light Drop. Um, this is the vegan supplement startup here. Yeah, that's uh, that's another cool project that um, I just got involved with. So I don't know if your listeners are familiar with uh, Matt Fraser, the the no meat athlete, but he's got a very popular um, vegan podcast as well. He's been running it for over eight years now. Um, obviously, about um, he's an ultra runner, and um, so his podcast is not just about running, but about living the the plant-based lifestyle and being an athlete on nothing but uh, vegan food. Cool. Uh, So he's one of the co-founders of that. And Light Drop, um, our first product is called Complement. So it's it's not exactly a a supplement. It's it's a product to complement the vegan diet because it contains just the things that um, you really need to, to get in. And you normally you can get with with food, and that's vitamin B12, mm-hmm. vitamin B3, and um, the long chain DHA, EPA, omega three fatty acids. So it's just that it's completely organic, mm-hmm. and it's made by vegans for vegans. So um, that's uh, it, we launched it about four months ago, and um, it's been growing pretty well. So I'm I'm really happy to to be working on that. That's excellent. What kind of uh, form does it come in? Is it a tablet or capsule? Or? It's it's a spray. We are working on on capsules as well. Mm-hmm. But right now it's a spray that you can spray in your mouth. You okay. can spray in your food. You can spray in your smoothies or or whatever. And um, it comes as a subscription as well. So basically you just order it once and then it's gonna keep coming every month. And um, the the dosage is such that one bottle is going to last you one one month. So as long as you remember to to take it every day, spray it in your mouth. Mm-hmm. That that's it's going to give you exactly the essentials that that you need to complement your vegan diet. Oh wow, that's tremendous. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, who came up with the name? I like that light drop. That's a pretty neat name. Light drop. Um, that was. Uh, collaboration of, of the co-founders. So that's Matt Fraser, Pamela Ferguson, and um, Matt Tolman, who's also my co-host on, on the Plant-Based Entrepreneur Show. Oh, how cool. I'll have to check that out. I'm, I'm really big into supplementation, too. I think it's important. I think that's a deficiency a lot of Americans, uh, you know, here, um, you know, I find a lot of times that it seems like a very big industry, almost like, you know, a multi-billion dollar industry. But 
I think people are just misled a lot of wrong information when they go to like the local, you know, grocery market here in America, it's usually Walmart and they get the cheap synthetic fillers of some, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, um, that's my big issue. Um, but with you saying that the light drop is a whole organic, all natural product, that's a huge difference. I mean, that really is, um, uh, can you tell the folks the difference when they're consuming a whole product like a light drop versus, let's say, you know, just the average manufactured filler or synthetic product? See, here here again is where you should probably be talking to my wife. So whatever I'm saying, I, yeah. is, I correct from, from what I know from her. But sure. um, yeah. the thing about um, supplements in, in general yeah. is that often because you have the synthetic vitamins and they're in isolated form. Yeah. They, they will not act the same way that that a vitamin would act if you were getting it in with let's say an, an apple or mm -hmm. or a salad or a lettuce or or whatever mm -hmm. so um even though you might be getting the right dosage and you might be getting the recommended daily intake the effect of it might be way lower than if you were getting the same dosage from from whole, from whole foods Okay. So, okay. yeah. What we're doing here with um, with complement, obviously, it's it's still in isolated form, but it's a lot more natural. So, our omega three fatty acids come from from algae. The um, vitamin D three comes from lichen, and um, obviously, vitamin B twelve. That's that's from bacteria because that's where vitamin B twelve comes from, no matter where you get it, mm -hmm. and. Um, just a note on that, most people think that um, vegans are deficient because vitamin B12 is found in, in meat and animal products. It normally is, but it's found in meat and animal products because animals get it supplemented in, in their feet. So by taking it in, in spray form, you're just eliminating that middle step there and, and get it like that. I think you're right, Jerry, because I'll say this personally, you know, um, for anybody that I've ever met that uh, lives the vegan lifestyle, they're like the healthiest self-conscious people I've ever met. They look great, you know, including you and Maya. They uh, just really live the lifestyle. If there's any diet that I would like recommend any of my clients or when I'm teaching classes, I always strongly say, hey, you can't go wrong with the vegan lifestyle. That's like the A plus top 100% best. Uh, lifestyle to live with. I mean, no question. Because you're right, there's a misconception. Oh, if you're a vegan, you might not get enough protein or what have you. And that's just garbage, you know, right now, especially in America where we're at right here. I mean, way too much protein, way too much carbs people are getting, and too much meat in general. They wonder why they've got high sodium, high cholesterol, blood pressure issues, etc. So, uh, I, I think that, again, you know, what you guys are doing is just uh, truly educational and getting the information out there. So I commend you for that. Um, a couple other things I wanted to ask you about, Jerry, um, because last time we had you on here, um, you were a self-proclaimed uh, sci-fi geek. We talked a little bit about that. <laughs> And so the reason why I bring that up, uh, Todd, his partner, Rick, who I don't know if he's there, but um, he spoke with Di, the other co-host who spoke to D uh, Maya about the uh, sci-fi book that he's written. And so you guys will have to touch base and talk sometime um, about the uh, book. Todd, remind us, what was the name of the book again? I'm here. Hey, oh, there's I'm Rick. Here. Yeah, Rick, uh, there's Jerry, Jerry, Rick. <laughs> By the way, I've been enjoying the interview, man. This is very informative. I'm, I'm yeah. kind of telling into it. So. Thank you, Jerry. This I've been sitting here just yes. back going, wow, this is really good stuff. <laughs> it is. You, right? It really is. It's very educational, you know. And and also, um, the other thing too, I don't know if Todd, Rick, you guys know this, but uh, Jerry's also a skydiving instructor. I learned that last time I spoke with him. Have you been able to do any skydiving since we last spoke, Jerry? Actually, I'm I'm happily retired from that job. <laughs> so um, since we left New Zealand, I I have not done a, a single jump, which okay. is. A so far, it's fine with me. I am beginning to miss it in in wow. terms of a hobby. But um, the thing with my work in New Zealand was that I did about 5,000 jumps in, in four years. <laughs> and wow. pretty, pretty wow. all of them were, were working jumps. So I was getting paid for that. I had to do them. And it kind of burned me out. Wow. It's, uh, it's hard to imagine. I definitely wouldn't have imagined it years ago when I was just starting jumping. But um, right now, I'm really glad that I got out of that industry and, and took a break because um, the negative 
the downside of, of working like that was that I just couldn't find time to enjoy skydiving and, and jump for fun. So, mm -hmm. um, no, I, I haven't been jumping in nearly a year now. Wow. Uh, really happy about that but i'm also really looking forward to to the day when i can just grab my personal rig and head out to the drop zone and knock out a couple of jumps just for my own pleasure without unbelievable oh gosh. Anyone or, or anything like that oh you've got no fear jerry that's an incredible it's something i think that i probably can safely say i'll never end up doing uh i'm just too afraid of heights uh it's just too scary but uh jerry this has been fun and informational uh again i've learned so much always whenever i get a chance to speak to you and maya um let me ask you a few more things before i let you go though um Tell us uh, about the plant-based entrepreneur show itself, please, uh, for folks who want to listen and subscribe. And also, what can they expect when they become, uh, you know, a subscriber uh, to the plant-based entrepreneur show? Okay, so the plant-based entrepreneur show is uh, the weekly podcast that we produce about vegan businesses and and the people building them. So it's made. To, to educate and, and to inspire a new generation of, of plant-based entrepreneurs. Um, the episodes run about one hour long and each week we, we interview one owner, one startup founder, one inventor who, who's come up with a cool new idea in the vegan industry, whatever part of the vegan industry, we don't just focus on food. Mm -hmm. um, People can find out more about it at theplantbasedentrepreneur.com. So that's where they'll also find, find um, all of the episodes that we've put out so far. Um, they'll also find a link to Plant Based Business Week on, on that site, because like I said, that event has um, wrapped up and the, um, the interviews of Plant Based Business Week are only available to registered members right now. But if they go to the plantbasedentrepreneur.com, there's a link there where they can get access to five preview interviews cool. for free. So um, find out more about that. And of course, if you're on iTunes, just look for the Plant Based Entrepreneur Show. That's the easiest way to, to subscribe and follow. That's easy enough. And we'll have that plug, too, at the end when we wrap up. Uh, you know what? You just reminded me, too. Uh, before we start recording, Jerry, you were uh, mentioning the possibility of a promo code for some of the listeners out there, too. Oh, yeah. So if, if anyone is interested in um, trying Night Drop, the, the compliment that, that I was just talking about, mm -hmm. I, I set up a discount code for, um, for your listeners. So if they go to www.lightdrop.com, io and um shop so they they click on shop they they can just purchase a single bottle they can purchase a subscription and pay a little less but if they use the promo code go at, at checkout they're going to get an extra 10 percent discount oh that's awesome excellent the promo code go that's excellent thank you so much for doing that to everybody who's uh, watching out Good there for job. that Oh, it's a very good code. Yeah, yeah I love it. Uh, you know, the other thing I love about Jerry, too, not only is he just a really smart, intelligent, well-spoken young man, uh, his uh, color scheme, I don't know if you guys have uh, seen, but you'll see when you go to his website, he's green, just like myself. Uh, I think that's yep. the one thing we share in common, that uh, we're always, uh, you know, in green color uh, together. So green's a very friendly color. Green is vegan, plants, and, of course, uh, exercise and movement and all of the above. So I, I commend Jerry, you for that. If you don't too. mind me jumping in, I don't mean to hijack yeah, no, you, Rick, but yeah, please. Jerry, so we have a small tech company. So if you needed any help with technology or stuff like that, let us know. We'd be happy to help. You know, this whole idea. We we're kind of a more purpose-based tech company. Um, almost work sometimes like a borderline nonprofit in a lot of ways. So we'd be happy to help you guys out if you needed any technology help, website or anything like that. If you're having any problems, you needed somebody to bounce something off of. You may already have somebody you're working with, but sometimes it's good to get a second opinion because you're. Your cause is amazing, and so we would love to. We would love to just throw that hand, helping hand out there. If you need that, is that okay, Taryn? Did we have I love it. That hey, out that, there? you know what? I uh, totally can uh, advocate uh, Todd and Rick for you. After all, they are the tech advocates, Jerry. So if you want to hook up with them, and they would definitely help you out for sure, certainly. Like you said, collaboration yep. is the key. I think you yes. said that. Earlier. Yeah, Certainly. So we're on board with that. And can I ask one more question before we go? Please. I wrote this down. Yeah. Oh, and I was dying to know this. I was kind of Todd, ask this question. <laughs> so if, uh, if you're if you're like us, there's a lot of people who are what we call vegetarians or borderline vegans, and kind of we just can't quite cross the finish line. 
from your personal experience, what would you give as an advice to someone like us who we kind of get with that field and we get in and out and fall in and out? What would be maybe some advice you would give to from your personal experience? I know you said your wife's the educator, but what would your, your personal advice be? Good question, uh, Rick. Well, the first thing I would say is go easy on yourself. Um, be aware that even if you're just reducing your, your intake of, of animal products, you are still doing good with that. So, um, you know, recognize the um, positive effects that you're already doing and um, be, keep on doing it because um, one of my favorite vegan thinkers, he, he's got this theory that I think is um, quite right in, in terms of how, how our psychology works. The longer you, you do something, and that might be not eating animal products or it might be just reducing them, the more you're going to be looking for justifications for, for your actions. So, you know, if right now, if it's too hard to, um, to give up that last bit of chicken or, or cheese or, or whatever, don't be too hard on yourself. And um, try looking for, for the positives in, in what you're doing right now and be aware that, that you're doing good. And I think over time, the awareness of, of doing good might just be enough to, to get you over the finish line. So it sounds like it's a process. It's it is a process. process. It was a yeah. process for me as well. It took me pretty much the better part of a year to to go from meat eating to, to dropping cheese. So um, I, I really don't like telling people that they need to go cold to forky and, and just give it up overnight. Mm -hmm. Good. That's very great. well said. Yeah. Very helpful. I feel better already. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are on the right track. That's great. Well, Jerry, uh, again, thank you so much for your time and uh, help here. You've been just extremely uh, helpful and insightful for us, as always. And would love to have you back on here again very soon. And uh, please let me know if we can have you back and um, see how everything's going for the next business week that's going to come up, too. That would be terrific. Yeah, I would love to do that, Darren. And um, thanks again for having me on today. My pleasure. Uh, thank you, Jerry. Just and for down. thank you, Rick and Todd, uh, guest appearance yeah. from Rick there. And uh, as we fade to black, here comes uh, Jerry's contact information right now with the Plant Based Entrepreneur Show. We'll see you, Jerry. See you, Todd, Rick. See ya. Nice meeting you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.